I'll tell you another part of the industry that um, maybe people don't know, but um, when Pop, so it's the learn to swim market. So we call learn to swim zero to zero to 10, um, because even if a child is joining swim team at five, six, seven years old, it's still a, a, a place of, of play and a, a place of learning, right? So we call zero to 10 this, this learn to swim. And when Pablo and I started the company, we said, you know, we're just gonna make products. This is a hobby. We're never gonna do goggles or suits. That's not us, we're, we're a product, you know, we're, this is it. Um, but when both of us had, you know, we, we had boys about the same time. And when both of those boys were two years old, we both put them in different swim schools. And we both said, you know, gosh, the, uh, the goggles for little children are really bad. Mm. Um, you know, they just, they don't make a goggle for little kids. And, you know, Pablo looked back at his swimming career and said, God, there was a period of my life where I didn't even use goggles myself. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and so, uh, so we, I, I, I said, um, and, and that would have been the year 2000, we said, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to really try and figure out how to do a great goggle for little kids. Mm -hmm. um, and in 2001, we introduced one of those first goggles for little kids and, and the, the swimming schools embraced us. They said, God, this is great. This is a goggle that works well for little kids. Um, so today, the swim school market's really important to us because we also provide tools to, to them. And, and the, it's the same thought process. We say, you know, like, why would you put a child in swim fins? I'll tell you what, when the child starts kicking, it changes their body position and they start traveling through the water. Um, when they travel, um, they're getting this sensation of water coming over their face and it's enjoyable. Right. Um, so actually fins aren't cheating. Fins are just helping them get that first feeling of, of movement. You get that, that idea legs... of what it's like. Yeah. So we love that. We love the learn to swim market. You know, it, it's one that we're, we're passionate about. We, we spend time with a lot of swim schools um, and just, to gain understanding, you know, what are, what's the thought process in teaching someone to swim? And, you know, it's a shame that everyone can't learn to swim. Right. Um, but we, we even, we work with a, a group called Hope Floats. Mm -hmm. We donate a portion of all of our goggle sales to uh, swim school programs so that they can, you know, bring in families that otherwise can't afford to put their kids in swim lessons. It, it's the one fund that we, we help contribute to. It's because um, if you can learn to swim, you'll swim the rest of your life at some point. And folks, it's, it's, this is one of the things that, that we, we like Finis so much for is because, you know, there, there's a lot of innovation going on there. Um, you could tell John's a, a really creative person. And we love that because thinking out of the box all the time. I don't think he could think in the box, actually. <laughs> you know, his mind just <laughs> constantly like, how can I figure something out to help somebody? And uh, we appreciate your efforts and because I think it's just a great thing. So if there's some new uh, ideas, I, I have to tell you something, John, years ago when I was a kid. So I remember I came in one day and I'd made this invention and I was so excited. I was probably 10 years old and we lived in the snow belt in Maine, which can get huge amounts of snow. So anyway, I came in and I invented a tire. The tire had little tiny um, piece of metal in them. And so as it went around, so those yeah. are called studded tires, which you're probably familiar with. Yeah, now, yeah. I didn't invent the original. <laughs> I invented it, but didn't know it had already been invented. So I had invented the studded tire and I showed it to the teacher. And she says, oh, sweetie, it's so nice that you're thinking like that. She says, but when it comes down to it, I want to let you know. This is back in the 1970s, <laughs> early 1970s. She says, don't waste your time thinking of new things. She said, I, I see that look in your eye right now. And she says, wow. everything that's ever going to be invented has already been invented. Wow. <laughs> so I want to get you straightened out so you can focus on the, you know, what you need to for the future. Oh. Boy. <laughs> I, I, I just had to tell you that because you yeah. and I are both very innovative. Can you imagine that? Yeah. Uh, and yeah, Steve, says, don't listen to that teacher. <laughs> yeah. Steve Jobs and Wozniak both grew up and started Apple Computer two miles away from my home. There you um, go. And, you and know, that wasn't so anything like, new, was it? 
No. <laughs> Oh, that's great. It was, it was just such a it's a pleasure to talk to you because I know you'd get the, you know, wow. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing how de debilitating a teacher could be, you know, in that case. Hopefully you get the other side of it when you're a teacher. Yeah. So so let me ask you a question. So how do you when because you have to have all these people trying to give you ideas on things that they think are because there's a lot of people that are don't know what to do with their ideas. How do you take a product and and how what's your process of determining whether a product is going to be viable or not because you know you're, you're that's a lot of yeah. time money for you guys to to build these products yeah no that's a really good question um we we do have something called a product filter process um so people that want to submit uh, an idea to us um will typically sign a non-disclosure uh we we ask them to give us a very, very high level, short executive summary of the idea. Um, that way they're not some, at risk, right? That's right. And we're not at risk. And then, um, you know, we will disclose with them that says, you know, more often than not, it's not the first time we've heard the idea, but everyone has a spin on it. And sometimes it's, it's only a matter of enough iterations before something maybe resonates. But the, the product filter process allows you to filter out pretty quickly the feasibility of making a product. So uh, what people don't take into consideration, the, the patent process is very expensive. Mm -hmm. So should it be patented or shouldn't it be patented? Um, protecting a patent is extremely expensive. Right. That's um, different than just putting the patent on, right? But then absolutely. pursuing it, it, right? If somebody's stepping on your patent, that's super yeah. expensive, right? Yeah. Um, and then what's the, the cost to actually make the product? You know, is it, is it a product that actually could be made? Um, and, and what would those costs involve? So, you know, uh, the, the cost of designing, engineering, and making a mold, it's an expensive process. So, but there is a, a finite number. So we can take a finite number and say, well, this is that cost. Uh, and then, if you knew how much it, it would cost to make the mold, then how much will it cost to make the part? And if you can make the mold and the part, then you have to think, what would the perceived price that a consumer would want to pay for that product? And how many of those products do we have to sell to not only at that price to cover the cost of the actual making it cost and the, the production cost. Um, and a big one today is actually considering where would we make the product and how will we go about the freight quotient? Because the bigger the product becomes, the, the, the freight bill can be um, extremely high. So, so someone might think, well, you know, we can make a product for, for $14, but uh, if getting it from the factory to you is another $5 per part, and you're taking big volumes and then getting it from you to the customer is $25 per part. Um, wow. The math might not add up anymore. So there's, you have, there's to, a, you have to project like how many, how many, how many, how, what's your potential market. Right. And then, yeah. and then, and then what are the ones that are going to actually want to purchase that? So it's got to be successful in getting traction just because you have the product doesn't mean it's going to actually get out to anybody. Right. Absolutely. Right. Um, so I think, I mean, the product filter process is, is a quick test that says, you know, where does it score on our scorecard? Uh, if it scores below a certain number, we tell the people, look, we took it through a product filter. We encourage everyone, if you love the idea, it's okay, try it. Like it might work in your capacity, but here's the results. Um, you know, we, we try and uh, go through that, that filter process only one time per month. I, I sit with a couple of people, we talk about the ideas. We run them through a quick filter process. Because um, that could eat your whole time, right? Yeah, it, it, it sure can. But it's, it's really nice to listen and learn from others. So many of the products we've developed today have, are, are iterations of conceptual thoughts that came from others. Now, a lot comes internally as well be, because within the business, uh, we do have that opportunity to speak with coaches and, and swimmers. And more often than not, it's just, it's, it's simply, you've heard the problem time and time again. I'll, I'll reflect on a product that I know um, you like with your group. It, it's the Tempo Trainer. Oh yeah, so, we love that. That's great product. So 
you at the higher level, we hear coaches talking about, you know, stroke rate and distance per stroke. And if we can get this all, you know, can we really lock in on that right number? Because those are the two factors that give us the result. Right. Um, but then when you take it down and you say, when, I mean, it, it, it becomes really apparent when you watch a more novice swimmer and their strokes per lap and their stroke rate changes every lap of their swim. Right. Um, and you watch <laughs> that and you say, insane. wow. Yeah. And so you could take, you know, so that the Tempo Trainer is a small electronic device that allows you to put in um, a, a time down to the 100th of a second, um, or you could do strokes per second, strokes per minute rather. So there's a couple different settings. Um, but by putting that under the goggle strap and, or underneath the swim cap, that we can reinforce this, this uh, cadence with the swimmer, they, it helps them get focus. Right. And as they get focus, um, so, you know, why and how did the product come about? Honestly, um, no one suggested it. It's just that we heard it so frequently talked about amongst coaches that like, this is what I'm watching. This is what I want to happen. This is what we're trying to do. But how do we, how do we instill that with the swimmer? Um, and, and what we did, we took that product that you made, which we think is phenomenal for what we actually wanted to, we were thinking about making one. And then I found that you had already made one. Thank goodness. Cause we don't make products, right? Yeah. <laughs> like how are we going to do this? And, and so what I did, we created a, a race map. So our software, you go and you go in our FM fast track tools and swimmers use this all the time, all over the world. And you put in your, what, what it is you want for a time. And it asks you different parts about the stroke. It, it takes you about, you know, maybe 30 seconds to fill one out, maybe less. And you get this map and it tells you exactly to the hundredth of a second, how fast you have to cycle. And that as soon as you have the map, right, you guys already have what's called the guide. So the tempo trainer is the guide. So it says, let's say it says 1.52. You can set the tempo trainer to 1.52. And what you do when you do that is you train your muscle to fire at the rate of 1.52. So you can do that. And this is great because your setups, if you're trying to fire at that rate, right? You put it in your, right, or, or, or on your side, you have a clip on that. And, and they can sit, so they can go downstairs, you know, in the basement or something, do their sit-ups at that rate. They can do their push-ups at that rate. That rate is in particular, if you go on our strength training program as well, we use that cycle rate. And the thing to guide you in there is exactly what you, you've made here, John, is this tempo trainer. And there's a third aspect that goes with it that, that is fantastic. And our swimmers use your right? Use your um, tempo trainer while they're swimming because they've already got the guy they know where. And then we do is we videotape them on a program like Huddle and, or, or one of the, you know, the, the video programs. And we, we get them and what they have is they've got a clock on there. So now they can actually measure the actuals so you can see it. So you can see that you're training for this. And what's so big deal about this is you got to get ahead of your race. So that means a month out, you got to know what that map is. And for a month, you can train at that rate. And then eventually you take the tempo trainer out. So you've got the tempo trainer keeping you on track, then you take it out and it's already in your head. You're already been moving at that rate. So the chance of succeeding are so much better. And then you use that, that huddle to make sure you're on track and the swimmer will come down and say, how many, how many cycles did I take, right? Because cycle count or that's distance per stroke, right? Or cycle count and cycle rate. If you add one stroke, you got to add another half of that cycle rate in. So yeah. these things go together so well, right? These three pieces called, uh, we call it race map triangulation. And you're part of that. And, and we've, you know, we, we, we think that, that that specific tool, the tempo trainer is phenomenal for showing people and guiding them. You know, your coach doesn't have to be, normal. you don't ever ask to have to ask your coach what the tempo rate is anymore. The, the race map tells you what it is. And then the tempo trainer shows you. Well, you know, I, I, I want to throw out a couple of like, because I hear so much of uh, how it gets used. And I, I, I like the, the way you apply it is this is the perfect logic. I mean, some people think, 
um, I became a swim coach uh, because I, I, uh, I didn't like doing math, but it's all math, you know, <laughs> all math. Uh, that's, that's the truth. And science, but I would tell you some of the highlights that I have, um, you know, I, uh, I was fortunate when, when working with uh, Richard Quick, I became friends with Jenny Thompson. Um, you know, Jenny uh, and I had the opportunity to do some wakeboarding together. Um, she would visit me at my, my home. I mean, she's just a wonderful person. But she told me one time, she says, you know, John, when I go into my race, I always know who I'm racing. And I always know the information about who I'm racing. I, I know how many strokes they're going to take. And I know what their fastest times are. And she says, I'll take that tempo trainer right into the ready room, right up to the blocks. And I'll just get the cadence in my head of and what I need to over. do to beat them. <laughs> yeah. Um, the game is over. Yeah. So it's just, um, we actually, you know, we all actually think the race map with those tools, we actually call it the game changer. Yeah. And it does it changes the game because it, it's over because once you can train, you already know what to do and now you can train to get it done. Right. And you've got that tool to do it. Game's over. Well, I, I tell you one way that people aren't always thinking about using the tempo trainer that, that, that I, I want to make sure I, I put this out to everyone. Um, people will think about, I want to hear it for, uh, you know, strokes per second or, strokes per minute so we can do it with every single hand touch boom 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 right. or we can do it you know full cycle right um but uh, i've heard other coaches say hey i want you to time your hip rotation off the beep mm -hmm. right so the um, focus of what they're focusing on right yeah yeah um i've, I've heard like a, a favorite drill i like is Take it up and let, let's go look at, uh, let's go uh, 100 meters, uh, 100 yards short course. And if you think about that, and let's say that we've got someone that's going to swim, uh, oh, keep it easy. Let's say, a, a, well, let's go a 48. Right. Okay. Um, you could set the tempo trainer at six seconds and you could say, okay, um, when you get to the, we're going to do these with, on, on six seconds or 12 seconds rest, mm -hmm. they could forget about the pace clock. But what's gonna happen is when they hear that beep, they, that's, that's their send off. What they need to be thinking about is, am I at the middle of the pool when I hear that next beep? Right. Am I hearing that next beep as yeah. my feet Section are hitting the wall on the turn? Pool. Right. And did I finish my race ahead of the beep? Did I touch and I heard the beep now I'm not having to go look at the clock to see what my time was. Either I beat the beep or I didn't beat the beep. Mm -hmm. And so now you're, you're I'm into my rest cycle. Right, we're compartmentalizing the pool and say, so you gotta get to this point by this time, right? By this point, yeah. by this, gives you milestones to hit, which are so important. Um, it, 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 it's just, uh, I think the phenomenal, the things that you can do with that. And one of the things that you had just mentioned, which I think is very important is the athlete's ability to focus. Now in our mind works program that we have in the, in the fast track in mind works, what it does is there are three, three different areas uh, that they concentrate on. Um, they're called specialty areas. One is focus. And what you're saying is you want to switch your focus from the arm to the, to the, uh, hip. These are so important to understand that you can manipulate your focus. And as a great athlete, you must learn to train your mind to be able to do these things. That's why the mind works program is the way it does. It's got focus as one section. Another section is emotion, right? How to, how to harness that emotion to, to get from place to place at the milestones. And the third one is progress, how to make and increase your rate of, of getting better at what you do. Yeah. And, and I think, that what you've done with these tools are, it's really so helpful to people that they don't have, these aren't just like regular things you get everywhere. These are unique opportunities for people that really want to get good at what they do. Yeah. Well, one last, since we're in this uh, state of uh, a COVID crisis and we're maybe not getting as much water time as we'd like. Um, I know a great number of athletes and coaches that use the tempo trainer on their dry land exercises right so um if you've got sprinters um you can set up that tempo trainer to just uh, let's say that we're we're gonna you know my ultimate sprint race let's say i'm i'm at 23 seconds um right. 
you set the tempo for 23 seconds and, and you're doing dry land. And during that 23 seconds, you, you get the send off. You are going all out for 23 seconds. Sabir Muhammad used to do this, right? He would just, that was his, and I think he was probably working at 19 seconds, but, but the point is like, just go really hard during that, that interval. Um, I've seen people take it onto the swim benches, you know, you put it, if you're on a VASA trainer, why wouldn't you put the tempo trainer on the back of your, your cap right. and um, get the cadence accurate? Like let's, let's train with some specificity. So that's what the tempo trainer does for you. And, and the value, if you think about, right, what would something like this cost and what kind of value would it bring? I can tell you this and again uh, to me, we're, we're not at this point, we've never sold that item ourselves. We put it up on our website so people can buy it. We, we're, we're not trying to make money from this product on our side. We're telling you, this is a great product and the value that this brings your, your child. Right. And I think it's like, what's the price of that, by the way? Uh, $59. We've recently established a, a, a code for anyone that's a, a member of, of your subscribing uh, groups. Right. And, and that code is FM promo. And if a person is on our website and puts in FM promo, they can buy anything from our website and they get 20% off. That's, that's normally the price that we offer to sponsored teams. So if we have a sponsored team, people on the team buy it 20% off. But we consider ourselves a sponsored team. We, we work together. We, right. we share concept, we share ideas, we promote one another. So, right. And, and was it all capitals or does it make a difference? Um, I think it's all capital. So FM promo. And then, and then when you put that in, you'll get a discount on any of the products, which is really nice of, of you folks to, to give to our athletes, but the pricing doesn't honestly really matter. But, you know, if they charge 150 bucks, it would be, you know, still way, way worth it. It depends on how much your swimming is worth to you. But if, if you're going to want to be a great swimmer and you want to get a game changer, this is a great product and they got lots of great products up there to help you with, with, with this. Cause again, a lot of people build it so they can, you know, uh, this, th th I build this product so it makes me money, but th there's something way, way more important about what will that do for you? What will that, what's the value of that product? How does it contribute to your success and what you're doing? Because that's immeasurable. When you, when you can get to college and you swim in college or you can represent your country internationally, and you thought, oh, I wonder if I should spend $59 on that. <laughs> or even take a step back, John, because like my, my thought process too is um, it doesn't matter. Like the fact that people get engaged with learning to be a better swimmer, mm -hmm. um, even if they don't swim in college, I think if we can teach them to swim better and hit their the goal. opportunity that they will swim for the rest of their lives yep. goes up dramatically. And if you can, if you swim for the rest of your life, then you're doing something for your health and wellness that'll right. benefit you forever. So, you know, even if we don't reach those, uh, the upper echelon, that's right. The more we understand about how to swim better, the and more everybody we everybody reaching their personal goals. Yeah, that's right. And that's great. Right. It's so important. Great. Good technique will allow you to do it forever. Right. Um, so that's, that's hey, John, I, I know that I would, I would love to come back on uh, another time. Uh, you know, I'd like to tell people about this smart goggle that we're designing. Oh, I heard I'd about like, that. You were telling me about that. It sounds fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> I'd, I'd like to do that. I'd like to even talk about um, technical racing suits. I'd like to share perspective because it's, you know, we build a great technical racing suit. We also build a, an incredibly durable and affordable racing suit called the Fuse. What's okay. most important is it's not the suit that makes the swimmer great. It's the swimmer that the suit allows the swimmer to be their best. And, you know, I think too much weight is given on, oh, the suit made, trust I, me, we, we've I got some of the greatest swimmers more. in the world. But so it makes a difference, but right. everyone out the there. The swimmer themselves, is, that's, that's the first step. You don't have that, you know, a lot of these co companies, you know, drink this or eat that. Yeah. Or, hey, <laughs> you know what? You can eat all you want. You can drink all you want. And then you're going to have to raise somebody like me. 
<laughs> yeah. Right. And, and I'm going to focus on getting better at what I do. And then I'm going to put on a racing suit or something like that. And that made me make me even faster. But when it comes down to it, I got to focus on myself, my technique, yeah. my yeah. capabilities. And then, so that's where you, those, those tempo trainers, things like that help you develop. And then, then you put on the icing on the cake, the way I look at it, that's that racing suit. Yeah. Yep. So we'll, we'll be bringing you back and we're going to have some special shows uh, with John. We're, we're just so lucky to have you uh, uh, do that. And, and, and I really want to uh, let you know that, you know, you've really done a lot for the swimming community and we want to appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us, John. All right. Until I see you next time. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye.